Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. I hope you are well. Um, I'm jumping between Instagram and Facebook here and just trying to make sure that everything has got started. Apologies for being a couple of minutes late for our morning devotional. I had everything set up and then the sun moved and it was shining directly in my eye no matter what I tried to put up to <laughs> cover things up. But I think we are all up and ready and started now. Um, so good to see you. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I can't see any comments or anything on Facebook. So I'm assuming that we're up and we're going on Facebook. Um, I'll give a couple of minutes just to let anyone join us who wants to this morning. And while we're waiting, if it's your first time joining us or if you haven't met me before, I'm Kelly and I am the, I oversee our kids ministry here at His Church London. So I just wanted to see who we've got with us this morning. Morning, Carrie Ann. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well all the way in South Africa. Hi, Leslie. Right, so I think I'm going to just jump in and get started. So today I wanted to just chat around a verse with you that I have had swirling around my mind since December, actually, um, when I was reading about the story of the birth of Jesus. And it's found in Luke chapter 2, verse 19. And it says, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. When we think of Mary, it's easy to think of her simply as a young faithful woman who God chose to carry baby Jesus. She was a young woman delighted to be chosen by God to do something incredible. Children's Bibles and general Christmas images tend to portray this beautiful, serene moment of a mother with her swaddled baby underneath the light of a bright star surrounded by cute farm animals. But if we pause to think of the reality of the situation that Mary found herself in and the responsibility that she was given to carry, not only for nine months, but as the mother of Jesus for his entire life, it's far from the serene, glowing, Instagrammable moment that pops to mind when we think of Mary. God had given Mary mighty promises. Promises that were so far from the reality that surrounded her. Mary was an ordinary, unwed, young virgin girl who in the middle of an ordinary day received an extraordinary message. One moment she was baking bread and the next, she was told that she was pregnant by an angel. And if that wasn't enough to process, she was then told that the child who she was carrying was going to save the world. I'm sure it took her a few minutes at least to process the truth of that message. And then after overcoming the gossip and worse that surrounded her, she then had to travel 90 miles by a donkey, heavily pregnant, to go and get counted in a census. You kind of wonder what must have been going through her mind at that time. But once finally in Bethlehem, now in the midst of labor, Mary and Joseph had to walk around, and I'm sure it was probably a bit more like wobbling around or waddling around and pausing a lot, um, only to find that the only place that she could bring this world changer into the world was a stable. She was going to give birth to the king of kings, surrounded by cows and sheep and the stench of farm animals. Mary had trusted God through the craziness of those nine months. I can only imagine that it must have been, and yet, she was only at the beginning. For she wasn't only called to give birth to Jesus, she was called to raise him and to be his mother. So 
The angel had called him great, the son of the highest. But Jesus lay there in her arms, helpless and wailing like any other baby would. She was told that her son was going to sit upon the throne of David, and yet he lay cradled in an animal's manger. The angels sang to make his birthplace known, but only simple shepherds heard his message. It was all full of contradictions. And yet, amidst it all, Mary was unmoved. After further confirmation from the shepherds that the child who lay in her arms was the saviour, it says, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. It doesn't say she grumbled, she didn't doubt, she didn't question. She pondered over all the highs and the lows and she treasured them in her heart and she rested in God's promises. The account then jumps to when Jesus was a young boy and after a visit to a festival, Mary and Joseph and Jesus are making their very long journey back home when suddenly Mary and Joseph realize that Jesus is missing. 30 seconds of having your child missing is terrifying. If you've ever experienced it, you know what I mean. But Mary and Joseph searched for Jesus for three days before finding him. As a mum who's experienced those moments of sheer panic when you know your child's in danger and then absolute relief when you know they are safe and you don't know if you want to grab them and hug them or shout at them if you want to cry or if you want to sing, I can only imagine how Mary must have felt in that moment. And yet again, the account seems to show that she was able to look at the experience and even in her lack of understanding about it, she saw it and she trusted it as a piece in the puzzle and she treasures it. In Luke 2, 51 to 52, it says once again, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Mary seemed to remain so aware of the potential and the great plans that lay within the child who she was raising. Her pondering and her treasuring suggests that even in those everyday moments, which I'm sure as a mom she found challenging, she held on to a deep knowing that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, for those who have been called according to his purpose. Mary treasured God's words to her. She actively remembered them, reflected on them, and what he had spoken to her. One of the definitions of the word treasured is to preserve a thing from perishing or being lost. When we fix God's word in our minds and we ponder over them and we treasure them, we remind ourselves to believe and it gives us a hope. However, the reverse is also true. If we don't treasure and we don't ponder, if we don't remember what God has done, if we forget what he has promised us, we gradually drift away from his way. Our eyes wander to distractions and we start to see the storm instead of the promise. We can end up confused about our direction, not knowing where we are on the map. Sometimes our focus might even drift so far from God's promises that we don't even realize that we're caught up in chasing lesser things, futile things, caught up in worrying and stressing and striving or just simply coping. The very act of pondering, turning his words over and over in her mind, kept Mary's heart steadfast to her calling and firmly secured in the promises of God's purpose. One definition of ponder is to bring together in one's mind. So when we take the time to store up and to ponder the things that happen in our life and in our family's life, and we choose to treasure them, whether they're good things or bad, 
God can show us the value in each thing. And we begin to see how more clearly how God carried us and was faithful to us despite our circumstances. This simple statement about Mary has really challenged me to tune into the ponderings of my heart. I have a choice about what I treasure and what thoughts I turn over and over in my mind. Mary's heart was fixed on God. Her ponderings were focused on God's word and the promises that God gave her and not on the many what ifs that can easily lurk around and lure us in, leading us to doubt and fear and worry and to even wander far from his great promises and plans. It seems that Mary's choice to treasure all of her experiences and ponder them in her heart brought her a sense of peace as she navigated those usual toddler years, those tweens and teen years, and then the heartbreaking journey that she walked with her son Jesus as he lived out God's great plan, a plan that was far greater than any parent could imagine or bear to endure. Perhaps your reality right now feels nowhere near the promises that God has for you or the plans that he once whispered to you. Perhaps those promises and those plans that you treasured have got buried so far beneath life that you've forgotten about them or lost hope in them. Perhaps you haven't actually ever even sat to ponder the great plans that God wrote for you when he created you. Or perhaps you just need a little reminder to take that time to make space to ponder and to treasure. As I sat gathering my thoughts about this, the lyrics based on Psalm 46 verse 10 came to mind. Be still and know that the Lord is in control. So regardless of what is happening in the physical world around you, if you take time to be still, to pause, to ponder, to sit still in God's goodness and stillness, to remember, to treasure, and to know that the God who made you has great and amazing plans for you and for your family. He can fill you with the peace and the knowing that he filled Mary with. The God who created you has plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. He tells us that. He promises to bless you and to keep you, to be gracious to you and give you peace. So in our world of instant access and constant stimulation, even when we think we are relaxing, our minds are scrolling and swiping and comparing and if only and what ifing. When last did you sit down with nothing else to look at other than your own thoughts? When last did you ponder what's in your heart? When last did you really take a moment to think about what you are treasuring in your heart and in your mind? Matthew 6, 21 warns us, for where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. So I challenge you and I encourage you as I am doing so to myself to make space to be still, to stop scrolling when you're supposedly resting and to sometimes just pause and ponder and treasure on all of God's good promises in your heart. For he is for you, he is not against you. I hope you have a really, really great week. May God's presence go before you and beside you, behind you and all around you. May he protect you this week and keep you well. Hopefully see some of you soon. Bye.